All right, so I'm here to explain the entire card deck system. I've already built a deck just for convenience sake that I'll go over and explain. I build another one, but like they take a while to really put together competently. But uh, to start, there are five different unique types of cards with obviously Universal being a separate group in itself. But Universal cards can go on any character. And you look in the top right corner to every character's portrait to help figure that out to start. So like, you know, if you're playing Decker, you can only use the unique cards of growth and order, which is the green cards and the white cards specifically. They'll be marked, you know. But, like, you know, if you throw on, like, a blue intellect card, which is, you know, something on Gideon here, it won't help Decker at all. It will not work. Decker won't even be able to equip the card. Same thing with the purple, well, the blackish more. That's corruption. Corruption's useful, and they all actually generally kind of a theme, you know, like, growth is more health-based, order can be more everything-based kind of universal stats and buffing. And intellect's more magic-y. Fury over here is more physical, but that's not important. Corruption is the next one here. We'll go over Fury in a second. And basically, Corruption is more like dark damage, more like crits and like life steal -y kind of stuff, from what I could tell. But, you know, certain characters only take advantage of certain things, you know. And with Fury, same thing. It's kind of like attack speed, damage, maybe some life steal or crit dependently. It's kind of weird, but, like, they generally keep a theme to them. But yeah, you take advantage of those, and you can use those kind of sets on characters. So always look at your character's portrait if you use a unique kind of card to help note, like, hey, my Gideon, like, needs health. He wants to be a bruiser. That's the build I've been working on, and I'll be showcasing. And it's like, hey, how do I take advantage of that? Well, you need to make sure you know all about it. So, you know, you look at his stats, you see he doesn't have any, like, growth sets. So you can't put on special growth cards for health. So, you know, you're going to be generally stuck with more universal ones. Which isn't bad, but you know, it's just like a general factor. So it's kind of like, hey, Gideon isn't built to be like tanky generally. So like, if you're doing it, it's kind of off made to some degree. I don't think it really is, but like, you know, it's not exactly the best. So we're gonna use best Gideon NA because it's clearly superior to everything I've built so far. All my other decks are literally trash before this one because I just now have learned how to properly build completely. To start, prime cards. Using a prime card is basically the effect that you get from Baron buff. It isn't something you purchase or put on. It's empty because it's already on your character, and it only activates once you kill the big purple monster. He's like the fire giant from Smite or the Baron from League. Take advantage of him. You kill him, you get one of these effects. I put Arch Magus because, as you can tell, it does a whopping increase in your damage, your boost, and on top of it, it gives you some pretty useful, unique passives. So basically, it gives you a lot of unique effects that can really taint, like, you know, turn the tide of the game. That's kind of the worth of having a fully upgraded item with, like, major casts and stuff and damage. It really will flip the game in your favor as, like, just basically able to shred. So if you're, like, an item down and you get this, you're basically going to be able to team fight evenly with your opponent. But if you're on equal ground or pretty close level to each other, getting this buff might just be enough to put you over them. Which is very good. I don't know how balanced it is directly yet since, you know, these numbers look pretty good on paper, but they might be a little bit unbalanced or imbalanced. I haven't really tested it because, you know, this game's pretty much just came out for me yesterday. I'm a level 6, like, for God's sakes. This is pretty intense for me to, like, try to figure it all out. Uh, all builds, health potion, mana potion, you'll see even in mine. Just always have one. You want a harvester key and some kind of scout's ward. Um, I generally ignore these items, though, since I have better ones just because of card pack luck. Like the Magus key, which allows me to equip stuff in the slots and upgrade it. So I can use it as a full build item. The same with the Magus ward, because it's a stealth ward. So on top of it being, well, it's shadow wards or stealth wards. And what they do, basically, a regular ward you'll be able to see as an enemy. A shadow ward, though, an enemy will not be able to properly see. You see you get multiple charges, and, you know, they refill when you go back to base, from what I know. But, uh, that's not important. So, you know, you take advantage of your ward and throw those down. And so you see your equipment. Now, to start, you can filter some stuff around here. So, for me, I'm going to filter and focus towards energy damage, because I don't... Well, I'm a mage, so I'm going to need that point Gideon. As you see, I already bought the items because, like, I was just putting a build together, and normally I just go back through it, but taking the build thing takes 20 minutes, and I don't have that kind of time to really explain everything, and also, just in general, like, there's a lot of the shit to go over, and it's really not worth watching me basically build a boring deck because I don't have a lot of cards, so you can see this is pretty much it. I built it with this baseline. So, you know, you want to get stuff, and you see a unique intellect card. I can use that on Gideon, so I'm going to put that on there, because one, it's my only cool card at all, and two, because you can take advantage of it. So you generally can buy through your items. You can filter them, so say you want those. You can filter out your tier list, so if you want these, you know, like say I want a 10-point card. I don't think I have any, but if I wanted to and I had one, I could put one on. Your limit of points is 60 in a match, 
by the time you get to late game. So realistically, if you have a 10 point card, you're probably, you're probably not putting it on. Probably don't have it. But um, ignoring that, then there's upgrades. Because you know, you put on your equipment, which I'll go over also how some of the equipment works a little more in detail, because a lot of people are confused on how active and passive stuff goes on. No explanation. Again, new game, so like you wouldn't expect it, but it's really hurting players' enjoyment of the game. I don't want people to be turned away from this game because they don't understand how to build their character because Epic doesn't know how to make a like five minute tutorial on how the game works. Um, but upgrades. Now, upgrades are kind of confusing, right? There's a lot of them, and obviously you know what you want, but like say, Certain upgrades don't work on certain items. All right, so my Magus Ward. I want to go ahead and put health on it, right? You know, stack some health, be a beefcake. Oh no, I can't do that. It won't allow you to put health upgrade cards in your deck on it. These greater healths are worthless to me on this item because they're actually, albeit I haven't directly proven this, it seems to be true. You can actually tell if it says energy damage and max mana, it will only accept max mana and energy damage cards. Not mana regen, not uh, like, you know, any kind of energy scaling thing, but specifically max mana. But if I go to Solaris Reactor, I have a mana regen, so should I get access to mana upgrades? Nope, but I can get access to energy damage because it does have the option to do that, as well as it has a mana regen card, so I can put mana regen. This is useful to pay attention to because it basically affects the match a little bit here. If you're building your character and like, you want to put on a health item, like, say, in this case, I have the uh, Elder Mage Amulet. This one boosts my health. I can't put mana on it. I can still put on my cast damage, and I can put on these health items, so they're useful, right? Now they have a purpose, since I said I was building Bruiser. So you gotta pay attention to what cards you're putting on, because that means also what upgrades you put on. So always use them to filter your upgrades out, so you don't make a mistake and put on, say, something really cool that will help you a lot, and then you find out you can't even use it, or that it's not even the right card category. So always pay attention to those two factors. They're really useful. But nobody knows that, of course, because Epic hasn't gone over it, and that's kind of a concern, but this is an alpha, so like... They aren't really expected to, but it would have been nice just to kind of have the information, or at the very least, the card maker have some kind of explanation on the cards when you take them, like, you know, a little text being like, hey, this card will not work with X items if you try, or like, hey, you can't upgrade this, or just a general explanation of the UI. It doesn't go over much. But now, the real big issue. This one has been my hugest issue, and I don't know if anybody else ever has this concern, because it seems everybody I know does, but like, maybe we're all just really stupid. But how do passive and active cards really, you know, work? Like, okay, I have these passive cards. They're all passive, pretty much, all my equipment cards. That's useless, though. There's only two passive slots, and I can't put any passives in my active slots to take advantage of their stat bonuses. Why is that? What, what the hell? Now, this is from what I know. I don't actually have a direct tested thing on this. But from what I've been told now, as of recency, by looking online and just talking to other players, that the actual method to, like, getting your actives, because... It's pretty much not explained at all again, but in alpha, yada yada. Is the fact that when you are playing this game and you have your little active and stuff, you have to fill your two passive card slots with your passive cards before you will be able to place more passives inside of the active card area. Now, the reason this is, is so players are motivated not to, you know, waste all their active slots, say, with their active items, and then put passive stuff in their place. And I get it, this is a great strategy by Epic Games, because this way basically you have a lot more active variety, yada yada. And it helps players kind of structure their deck build a little bit more, but... In this case, it kind of hurts players because they don't know that, and so they're damaging or making builds where they're trying to focus towards getting active items that won't help them reach their full potential. Or they don't understand how to put on these active items. And like, I mean these passive items, because you can't put actives and passives, so you start assuming since, you know, your passive slots don't work, that you can't put passives and actives, and then it weirdly lets you, or sometimes it doesn't, and it's just like, oh, how does this work? Basically, you put passives, you fill your two passive slots, you have to do that first, and then you'll have access to all of your actives. Once you do that, it's all good. You can go ahead and you can just shit stack all the passive cards you want in your active slots, currently for I know. And that is generally how you make a build. You can actually do that. Obviously, you build how you want. You pick your player preference. Maybe you want a very big mana. Like, I, I didn't really care, even though Gideon used a lot of mana. I just kind of made a build that was themed towards, you know, doing a lot of damage and having a lot of health. But say you want to do otherwise, now you know how to do it, so you can have the freedom to build any character you want, any way you want. Um, I hope the video helped. I mean, I tried to explain everything. If, you know, any information is wrong, I'm gonna, you know, 
generally apologize, correct it, whatever, as it goes on, look into updates, try to find any information I missed, and, you know, go over more gameplay, just to make sure. Uh, so, you know, enjoy the video, thank you for watching, I'm glad if I helped anyone, if it didn't matter, I'm just glad to, you know, just put something out, because I haven't really done anything in a while. So, see ya!